Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains. And today we're taking a look at three large cap tech stocks to consider buying before earnings next week. And this is amid all of the rebounds in big tech and some of the unknowns heading into the larger part of the first quarter earnings season. And then obviously everything that's going on with the Fed and interest rates and inflation. And the three stocks we're looking at today are Microsoft, Meta, Platforms, formerly Facebook, and Amazon. But before we get into everything, remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast, and make sure to check out our zax.com slash promo page for a look at some of our services, portfolios, and more. So before we jump into these three stocks, I quickly want to do a broader market overview to give a sense of maybe what's going on with the broader tech sector and kind of the lull we've seen at the moment to give a better sense of if people want to jump in maybe before or after earnings. So the markets remain pretty eerily calm, uh, even as we get further into the heart of Q1 earnings season. So Tesla's report came out uh, after the bell on Wednesday, after the closing bell on Wednesday, and it eventually tumbled 10% yesterday on worries about profits and its price drops for its vehicles. So despite the EV giant's 10% drop, though, the NASDAQ only fell by about 0.8%, and the benchmark was down just 0.6%. Uh, on low volumes, and we also saw buyers step in later in the session. So this came after the market was essentially unchanged on Wednesday and Tuesday, relatively flat on the day. Uh, and it's worth constantly remembering, though, as we head into this really busy part of earnings, as for these companies are reporting next week, uh, that the NASDAQ has moved about sideways since the end of January. So all these stocks are up big, but we've kind of chopped around and moved sideways for the better part. Uh, of the last several months, and the S&P 500 has managed to eke out kind of a tiny gain since early February, and both still remain well above those 50-day and 200-day moving averages. So this is kind of the broader plate spot we are in the market, uh, heading into the really busy part of earnings in the next several weeks, where we have the companies I mentioned, as well as Apple and some others. So the market could face a test in the coming weeks with Microsoft and Apple and Amazon, um, these other huge market movers. But if these reports don't really push the market in either direction, uh, it's kind of hard to imagine that any of these reports will. So that could mean that Wall Street's really just laser focused on inflation and the Fed's response. So over the next couple months, we'll see what the inflation reports come in. So we'll see, unless obviously there's like a brutal report or a really stellar report from one of these companies. But seemingly Wall Street is just willing to kind of sit in its hands and wait for something really uh, that proves to be a catalyst and maybe none of these earnings reports do, but we'll know soon enough. So with this in mind, we're going to jump into Microsoft, which is reporting its Q3 FY 2023 results. So they're on a strange fiscal year, and that is on Tuesday, April 25th, so next Tuesday. And we're just going to tell you everything that's going on with Microsoft. So Microsoft is a Technology Titan, as everyone knows, that's recalibrated its long-term trajectory with that expansion into cloud computing. Uh, but the current economic outlook has helped showcase that even though cloud computing is that booming industry, it's not totally immune from these economic ebbs and flows in the current slowdown and possible recession. The company, like many of these global giants, also has uh, makes a ton of money outside of the U.S., so it's dealt with some currency headwinds as well. Uh, Still, though, Microsoft posted a whopping 18% revenue growth in fiscal 2022, so it's fiscal 2022, which ended back in June, which marked its fifth straight year of between 14 to 18% sales growth, which is really impressive for a company of its size and age, and as I mentioned, highlights that strength of the cloud business. So the company has thrived alongside Amazon and Google uh, in the cloud computing sector, and it's likely to continue to fuel its top and bottom line expansion for years and years to come, even though it's facing some near-term headwinds, which we'll get into in a bit. So then alongside uh, its vital cloud efforts, it obviously still has Microsoft Office and Windows. They remain really valuable and kind of invaluable to lots of everyone from students to really large enterprises. I'm sure most of you work with a Microsoft Office or Microsoft type of product almost every day. Uh, It's also prepared for that hybrid work environment we're all in. It has Zoom competitors. It's still in the Xbox business. It has LinkedIn. And then more recently, it's been in the news because it's trying to capitalize on that generative AI, which is that open AI. So they have a big investment in open AI, which is the company behind ChatGBT. It's also now pitching customers about rolling out uh, these generative AI features into its services. It's also trialing out a Bing-based chatbot 
which is similar to ChatGPT. And last quarter, their CEO said that, quote, the next major wave of computing is being born as Microsoft Cloud turns the world's most advanced AI models into a new cloud computing platform. Uh, we are committed to helping our customers use our platform and tools to do more with less and innovate in the future for the new era of AI. So Microsoft and a lot of these companies are just, they don't want to miss the ball. They're going all in on this. So we'll, we'll see how that turns out in the next several months and several years and maybe several decades. But they're they're touting it right now that they're going all in on it, as are many other companies, because they just don't want to miss out on possibly huge profits. Microsoft's also in the background Still trying to buy Activision, Activision Blizzard in an all cash deal, which is kind of a bet on the metaverse, which now because of chat GBT is kind of you don't hear much about that anymore. And uh, VR gaming, but that's not clear to go through. But it doesn't really matter in terms of Microsoft long term outlook since it can buy into other growth areas and other areas within that metaverse world because it just is a money printing machine. It closed last quarter with roughly 100 billion in cash and equivalents. It uh, returned about $10 billion to shareholders last quarter via buybacks and dividends. Its dividend is yielding about 1% at the moment. So this brings us to the most recent quarter it reported, which was Q2 2023. Uh, so sales climbed just 2% last quarter, and its earnings slipped 6%, which obviously were against tough to compete against periods, but it was pretty a stark uh, change compared to what they've done recently. It is, though, worth noting that despite slowing cloud growth, it still really had a strong quarter. So what was driving the sales lower was its personal computing segment, which fell 19%. So the cloud segment actually still did really well last quarter. And if we look ahead, we're going to be able to see that the company, based on Zach's estimates, is projected to do about 5% top line growth this year to get up to about $209 billion and then get back to double-digit growth with doing 10% sales growth in 2024 to get all the way up to 230 billion. So five straight years of big double digit growth, 5% growth this year, and then 10% growth next year. So for long-term investors, that's kind of the, the crux of the argument is, is this near-term downturn already priced in? And then on the bottom line, we're calling for 1% adjusted earnings growth this year, and then 13% next year. And we should remember that they're already in, they're already halfway through the year for their fiscal year. So they're about to report Q3 of 2023. So, uh, People are probably already looking forward to that big bounce back in uh, 2024. And then in terms of its earnings uh, revisions, it's faded a little bit, but it's held up recently. So it holds a Zach's rank number three hold at the moment. And Microsoft hasn't seen Wall Street give up on the stock at all just because of these short term headwinds. So 22 of the 29 brokerage recommendations that Zach's has are still strong buys. Next, only one sell. In terms of its price movement, it's up about 18% year to date. And now about 14, or excuse me, 4% higher over the last 12 months, having soared really off those early fourth quarter lows. Yet it's still down about 17% from its peak. So that gives a sense that it's it's far from back to where it was, uh, those post-COVID booms. The stock's up about 200% in the last five years, which crushes the market's 55% climb in the Zach's tech sectors, 67%. And it's now trading at about 27.8 times forward 12-month earnings, which is about 23% below its peaks, but it's solidly above its 10-year median. So its valuation is well below where it was at those peaks, but it's getting back to maybe levels that might be what some people would consider a little bloated. This is why it might be a possibility for a lot of these big tech stocks. I mean, Salesforce and all of these companies have rebounded really heavily in 2023 and then many cases off those Q early Q4 lows to just wait for a pullback because it kind of seems that that could be the case even if they're able to report solid results uh, Microsoft included that said though it is above both the 50 day and 200 day moving averages and it experienced that so-called golden cross earlier this year so the technical traders are it's a little hard to be bearish at the moment on microsoft and a lot of these names and as i mentioned that both those major indexes are above those levels it's sitting between neutral and overbought levels in terms of rsi at about 60. so as i said if you're if you're focusing on possibly getting in a better entry point maybe you wait for a pullback after earnings or somewhat in the next couple months uh, but if you're a long-term trader who's or long-term investor who's thinking about holding Microsoft for say 10, 20 years, maybe you don't want to try to time it as much because who knows, maybe, maybe it has hit the lows and maybe it doesn't pull back too much. But 
uh, it, it seems like a, a solid bet that it could face some near-term selling pressure. Microsoft and all of these big tech names that have just run up really high, especially considering that we don't really know what's going to be just around the corner in terms of inflation and a possible recession. But overall, it seems like a good bet as a long-term hold. And now we're going to take a look at Meta Platforms, uh, which trades on the ticker Meta. And it reports its Q1 2023 results on Wednesday, April 26, so next Wednesday. And Meta, so we're just going to, as I said, what we did with Microsoft, we do the same thing for Meta. So the company has skyrocketed. Uh, it's a big test case of just off these lows from uh, Q3, start of Q4. It's up over 130% since early November. And the company is finally committing to cost cutting and its top line growth. It's obviously slowing after a decade of massive expansion. Uh, Meta stock might be a bit overheated right now, as I've mentioned with all these companies, but its valuation is still pretty attractive. So uh, we should also remember that it's the parent company of Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp, and it reaches billions of people a day. And Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse bet then doesn't really have to pay off, and the company is backed off those bets significantly and is focusing more on profits and what's working now so even if the metaverse bet never pays off and we never get to that point the company itself and those core businesses are still really really strong so meta like amazon and lots of others had over hired during the pandemic as well uh and it's now trimming staff the company closed 2022 with a headcount of about 86k so 86,000, which was up 20 percent year over year but we should note that that figure included a substantial majority of the roughly 11,000 people that they announced they were going to lay off in November. So Meta then in mid-March said they were going to cut another 10,000 jobs in what Zuckerberg's referred to as a year of efficiency. They're, so they're kind of, even though they're cutting a lot of jobs, they're in some cases getting back to just sort of either pre-COVID levels or post initial pandemic boom levels because they just overhired in many cases just trying to get rid make sure other people didn't hire these people just went on massive booms so you can read stories about it but uh so despite the the massive wave of layoffs it's not like they're just dumping half the staff they're in many cases just getting back to more just normal levels to where they were a year or two ago Meta also said when it reported its Q4 results that it took several measures to pursue greater efficiency and realign its businesses. So as I mentioned, a lot of these companies, and we'll get to Amazon in a bit, they're focusing after a decade of low interest rates and huge growth. When the growth slows down, they're going to have to start focusing on profits and becoming more stable businesses, which Microsoft and Apple have already had to deal with. Uh, but Amazon and Meta are in a little bit different business cycles and now they're finally focusing on profits again. Uh, so we should remember, if anyone forgot, the company used to be Facebook. It changed its its announcement it was going to change its name back all the way in the fall of 2021, which seems like forever ago. And that really scared investors at the time. And they've now had to work their way back off the ledge of this big metaverse bet. Uh, so the company's still really a, a massive money-making machine. The company... Also, we should note in August said that it would raise $10 billion for the first time ever in a bond offering. And this is to help fund buybacks, feed investments, to revamp its business and other efforts. So overall, we should look that uh, Meta closed 2022 with about uh, $10 billion in long-term debt with $60 billion in total liabilities. But that's for us $190 in total assets and $41 billion in cash and equivalent. So it's a it's a massive company with a really sturdy balance sheet. So uh, that should be attractive long term. That's not really going to change. Obviously, the social media titans 2022 seems to be in the rear view at this point. People are focused now on the fact that Meta's monthly active people, which they say is essentially Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, their reach, it was up 4% in Q4 to about 3.7 billion people with its daily active uh, users up 5% to 2.9, so essentially 3 billion people or nearly 40% of the entire world. And we should also remember that a large chunk of the world doesn't even have access to internet. So when you think about that, they're really just reaching such a massive audience that unless things change overnight, that Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp and even they could dive in and buy some other up and coming uh, <clears throat> company in the social media space that they just have a huge reach. So Zach's estimates are calling for Meta's 2023 revenue to climb 5%. Uh, 
Uh, this would be following a 1% year-over-year decline, which was its first ever, and then jump 11% in 2024 to get all the way up to $135 billion. And its just earnings are projected to climb 4% this year, and then a 21% in 2024. And its earnings revisions have trended way higher to help it land its actual number one strong buy at the moment. And it crushed our Q4 estimate by 41%. And its internet software industry is in the top 25% of Zach's industries at the moment. And then in terms of its stock price, uh, it skyrocketed roughly 140%, 140% off those early November lows uh, from around 90 to uh, – it was trading as it said $90 a share. So you miss those lows, but it's still way below where it's been. The stock has climbed – 685% in the past decade versus the Zach tech sectors, 210%, yet it's still 40% below its 2021 peaks. And it sits about 8% below its average Zach's price target and at well below it was at points during 2018 and pre-pandemic levels. So despite this huge rebound, it's still nowhere near returning to its peaks. Uh, Meta's huge run higher also has it back above both those 50-day and 200-day moving averages. And like a lot of these stocks and the, the market itself had that golden cross where the short-term moving average is moving back above the longer-term moving average. And uh, Meta's trading at a discount still to the Zach's tech sector at 22.8 times forward no, excuse me, the, the Zach's tech sector is trading at 22.8 times forward earnings, and it's trading at 19.4 times forward earnings. Uh, it's now being valued as a more mature, slower growth tech stock, uh, and it's still trading at a 33% discount to its 10-year median. So as I mentioned with Microsoft, you could wait for a pullback, possibly. Uh, it just recently came back under overbought RSI levels, and Maybe Meta would have to really, really post a great quarter and huge guidance for it to continue to climb. So you could just kind of see a, a sell the earnings report no matter what. But if you're a long-term investor, uh, Meta is going to be able to adapt with the advertisers. And even though they've had some shakeups because of Apple's privacy worries and its Metaverse bet and some competition from TikTok, it still just reaches such a massive audience and people are on their phones and that's where advertisers and marketers are going to need them. So it's certainly worth considering Meta as a longer-term play, even if you want to wait for a better near-term entry point. And then the last company we're going to look at today is Amazon, which reports its Q1 2023 results on Thursday, April 27th. So the last of the three companies to report. So Amazon suffered a massive fall from grace as it made way too many apparently big bets uh, on things during the pandemic, and it faces a major slowdown from its huge days of growth. So Jeff Bezos formally stepped down as CEO in the summer of 2021. And its new CEO, Andy Jassy, has since been attempting to pull back on the rampant spending and trying to work within this slowing growth environment. The company is laying off approximately 30,000 workers. It's cutting lots of corporate staff. And they're also trying to cut back on pay while maintaining an edge uh, in new dynamic areas of the economy. The company CEO, Jassy, as I mentioned in mid-April, commit said, he, once again, they're committing to cost-cutting and innovation. And this was in a letter to shareholders. So the company is working, as lots of these companies are, especially these cloud computing companies, with generative AI models. So they're focused on that. So they're, they're not going to try to miss the ball on that, but they're trying to just slow back on some of the massive spending that Jeff Bezos did kind of before he stepped down in the summer of 2021. So they're focused, like all these companies, to after these decade of booming growth, as their growth slows a little bit, to focus on the bottom line and cutting costs where it can't. Because AWS, which is Amazon's cloud computing business, is still by far the biggest player in the cloud computing space ahead of Microsoft and Google. Uh, it's Last year, it's reportedly had about 34% market share compared to Microsoft at 21 and Google Cloud at about 11. So that puts that into perspective. And Amazon roughly had about 40% of the e-commerce sales uh, throughout 2022, maybe a little bit less depending on which charts you're looking at. But that just shows you, once again, it's still a booming player in there. They're launching a drug prescription plan. Uh, that Prime membership is still a massive business, but they're they're trying to slow back on these bets they've made, like MGM. Maybe they're not going to 
continue to go on a spree like that. But overall, they're they're operating a massive business in key areas of the economy. Uh, so now let's look at some of the growth. Total revenue still climbed 9% last year with AWS up 29% year over year to $80 billion. And if we look ahead, we're calling for 8% revenue growth in 2023 and then 13% revenue growth in 2024 to get all the way up to $625 billion. So just when you're considering that they're going to – they posted 513 – or. $513 billion in revenue last year, and they're going to get all the way up to 625 by 2024. That just shows that the percentage sometimes change can cloud that they're going to add over $100 billion to their top line in two years. It's really insane when you think about that. And then they're projected to do about 90% adjust earnings growth this year and then 61% adjust earnings growth next year. As I said, the top line is marking a slowdown from the recent history when it was doing 22 35, 22, 31% growth over the last four years. But still, as the numbers get bigger, it's the percentage changes are harder uh, to function, just the law of large numbers. Uh, their earnings outlook has slipped over the last 90 days, though they've held up a little bit more recently. That said, though, they are trending the wrong direction at the moment. So it does still have a Zach Schneider number three hold, but if they do report bad guidance, you could see that that rank slip a little bit. And then in terms of the stock price performance, the stock is up 740% in the last 10 years, but it's down 10% in the last three years. And it's also still down 42% from its peak. So it's been on that huge run, but the last three years have been pretty brutal. Uh, and this is even though the stock's up about 28% year to date, which actually seems kind of tame compared to some of these 50% climbs from some of the big tech companies. The stock was up on Friday the last time I looked. It was trading uh, up about 3% higher on Friday afternoon, early Friday afternoon, at around $107 per share. And we should remember that that's that low price because they did a 20 for one stock split back in June 2022. And we should note that the stock just popped above its 200-day moving average. So that's a positive sign if you're a technical focus trader. So maybe Amazon, unlike some of these other companies, does have some room to keep climbing in the near term because it has not bounced as much as some of these other beaten down tech stocks. And it's sitting near neutral RSI levels. Though on the valuation front, it's still really high in terms of forward earnings. And this is why maybe Wall Street wants it to continue to focus on profits and cost cutting uh, because it's still trading at 65 times forward 12-month earnings. It had, to put it in perspective, it had traded at one point at 600 times forward 12-month earnings in the past 10 years and 163 in the past five years. So it's way down below those levels. But still, 65 times forward earnings is pretty massive, even for a company like Amazon. That's why they're focused on cost cutting. And then in terms of its uh, peg ratio, which factors in the growth, it's trading at about 36 times, uh, which is still well above tech, which is trading at 1.8 times. Obviously, though, it's well below its highs, but it is getting a little stretched there at the moment. So if you're really focused on valuation, maybe still not the best time to jump into Amazon. But when you consider where its stock price is and that it hasn't had the huge run up, uh, it might not be the worst time to get in to Amazon Whereas these other stocks, you might want to hold off until after. But if you're a longer-term investor, I think the the bull case is still there. If you want to hold Meta, uh, Microsoft, or Amazon over the next 10 plus years, but certainly worth considering waiting to see how these reports come in next week and just the market's reaction. So that does it for another episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.